Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you to thank you for another day, Lord God. We thank you for waking us this morning. Father God, we thank you for watching over us while we slept. Father God, we just ask you to give us the spirit of humbleness, Father God. Lord God, we just ask that you invite yourself in, Lord, where two or three are together. Father God, you are in the midst. So we ask that you come in and you ride with us through this interview, Father God. You give us the things to say. You give us the righteousness of the heart, the things to, to, to put out there, Lord God. Father God, we also thank you for this opportunity that you've given us, this platform that you've given us to be heard. Because, Father God, all we want to do is help. And if there's anything that we can do to help, Father God, we just ask that you give us the strength and the tools to do it. Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for our families. We thank you for the things that we have. We thank you for our strength and help. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for keeping the flies flies. Grandpa Kotcher and y'all Stubo in the studio. That Vibes Live theme song, you feel me? Orale, that's right. I got my pants way high and my hat real low, real low, low. low. Turn on your internet, vibes live, what you get? Chilling with Robin Lynn, she's about to make you in. Call you out and bring you in. Chilling with the Mexican, Yas Dubo, and Grandpa Kacha. Hey, hey. 273 Records Incorporated. Young boss, young major, you know we made it. Ooh. Ike Ellis, BK, Robin Lynn sponsoring. Video, video with Pastor Troy and West Music. Shelly Garrett, get it, cutting at the barbershop, Willie Brown, light skinned it, Bobby Brown, Judge Joe Brown, T.Y. Warm Bomb, Baby Radio, No Set Radio. Turn, turn on your internet, vibes live, what you get? Chilling with Robin Lynn, she's about to make you in, call you out and bring you in, chilling with the Mexican, Yash Dubo, and Grandpa Gotcha. Hey. Storm Talk 365 Bonita, Bonita. Clairborne, she's a superwoman, yeah, 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 yeah. Tina Hobbs, Simmons, Savvy Pro. Savvy Pro, Patrice Jackson, Mass Media, yeah, and you Maven, know, Robin Lynn, Maven, Woo. Worldwide Distribution, Going Seth up. Brown Corporation, That's Girl up. Outfitters, uh. Club Foodie, The Bad Brad Berkowitz, uh. yeah. Run It Down Production. Kate Bird, Dark Star Records With that real slick money Auntie with that gummy Grandpa Al Cello Sisters in motion Turn on your internet Vibes live, what you get? Chilling with Robin Lynn She's about to make you in Call you out and bring you in Chilling with the Mexican Yash Dubo And Grandpa Gotcha hey, hey. Turn on your internet Vibes live, what you get? Chilling with Robin Lynn. She's about to make you in. Call you out and bring you in. Chilling with the Mexican. Orderly. Yash Dubo. And Grandpa Gotcha. Hey, hey. And that's what I'm talking about right there, you know what I'm saying? We done did that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Mr. Clean Cut, man, done did that. Hey, Yash Dubo, you did all right, man. Orale, what's your problem, Holmes? You can't be talking about me like that, eh? It hurts my few dogs, eh? I'll talk to you later, Holmes, on the next <laughs> one. This is your boy, comedian Edwin Douglas. You are now tuning in Vibe Live, Red Carpet Exclusive Radio Show. I can't go no further without the man of thirst. Y'all know how I do it. I want to thank God for a breath to breathe. A mind to think, strength in my eyes to see, a voice to speak, the sound in my ears to hear, and the blood, and the blood, and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now, I got to do this. I'm not alone. Please welcome my co-host, Robin Lynn. All right, everyone. It's your girl, Robin Lynn. Thank you for joining us for yet another Special rendition, I mean edition, <laughs> of the Vibes Live Red Carpet Exclusive. Hey, Edwin, how you doing? What's up? I'm doing <laughs> wonderful. I had to take my 50-plus vitamin. 50-plus? Yeah, 50-plus, 5-O-P-L-U-S, vitamin. I, oh. I got to have it. Got okay. to have it. Got All to right. have it. 
But you know, we have a so wonderful show. geriatric this moment, I see, okay. Cool. But now you know we have a wonderful show today. Yes, and before we bring our guests on, uh -huh. this is how we do it. We got to give them a very warm welcome on our red carpet. You know what to do. Play it now. Check it out. Yeah, I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? I don't think that I can live no other way. Truth be told, I'm living now on an A. Not to see them blessings in the modern day. The Lord I serve, He give them to me every day. I love God. You love God. What's wrong with you? Love him, I love him. Love him, I love Love him, I love him. Love him, I love him, I love him. Love him, I love him, I love him. Love, love him, 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 love him. You ain't got the money moving by yourself. Yeah, you know you did it with a lot of air. No, it's only one, it ain't nobody else. Well, uh, you got me talking strong and I ain't rich, I'm talking well. Uh, See, I'm forgiving, I'm forgiving. Hey, hey. See, I have been forgiving, I'm hey, living. Hey. And when I say I love, I mean it. But uh, none of this be nothing if he come in, I miss the shot. I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you? I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you? I love him, I love him. Love him, I love Love him, I love him. Love him, I love him, I love him. Love him, I love him, I love him. Love, love him, love him, I love him, 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 Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, thank hello, you. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, do y'all feel that? Like y'all getting out the car, all dressed up, okay. walking on the red carpet, just waving at everybody, somebody like, love God. Do y'all feel that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, I love it. I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, welcome. We, uh, we, we really, really want to welcome you guys. To the show and uh, Robin, yeah. uh, I want to thank you for uh, inviting our guest to the show. And we have quite a bit to talk about. Um, let's do this. Speaking with Harry first, how did you and Frank meet? Wow, um, we actually met five years ago in person. I say in person because we found out we knew each other. Long before then, we were played together as kids, but um, we met five years ago in a studio because my brother-in-law had a studio in my home, and he came over to work with my brother-in-law, and I was introduced then to him. And later on down the line, we found out that we actually knew each other from kids, from childhood. <laughs> so it's kind of... It was ironic. We've been running in the same circles for a long time and didn't know it. Wow. Did Frank, did you knew her or you felt the same thing, uh, a coincidence? It was basically a coincidence. But um, I, when I met her at the studio, we, uh, we talked a little bit, but I was just really engulfed in the project that I was working on. But a year later, at the same time, um, I actually went back to back to the house to the studio, and um, it was my birthday, and that's oh. when we really started. To, <laughs> we really started to open up and get acquainted, and you know stuff like that. The, the history is really uh, kind of long, but just a quick synopsis: her brother 
and my god brother were both part of parliament funkadelics okay and uh and uh my mom and dad when they were younger back in the day parliament funkadelic used to practice at my house and my mom and dad used to sing with them so um at certain times her brother ron would bring her over to my house when he used to come over to my house to practice. So as kids, we played together and everything. So this uh, marriage and relationship was all ordained by God. And Amen. That's, the blessing. that's the blessing in this whole thing. So we've been running in the same circle. Like I've, I've known several of her family members. You know, I, I, I knew them before I really got a chance to interact with her. You know, like one of her brothers I'm really, really cool with, and she had no idea that I even knew him. You know, so um, it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Wow, this, this, this is beautiful. Um, Terry, um, when you were growing up, uh, not necessarily as a little child, but as a teenager, what motivated you towards your dreams? Actually, I have been, all of my family members are, can sing, play an instrument, um, both. And I was not blessed in that area. I love to sing, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> but um, when I was little, my brother, because he was in Parliament Francadelics, I, um, I love music. And so I was always around music all my life and all and I have a cousin who's also in a band has been in the band he has played with the um he played saxophone and he has played with um James Brown band and a couple of other bands and so just being in the music and hanging out with parliament if for people our age we know that that wasn't the type of atmosphere a little child should be in because <laughs> of how they were but I was in that atmosphere because of my brother. And, you know, as a little child, you have nothing to do but sit there and listen. So um, my, I'm very, I have a good ear for music. And I, I think it's because I had nothing else to do but sit there and listen. Yeah. Um, and I didn't understand the dynamics of the other, all the other stuff that was going on. So I was just into the music and Doing that, then I hooked up with a friend of mine who I've been friends with for years, um, Ron Heyman and Bob Sumner. Bob Sumner is now heavy into the com comedian area, arena. And so, but we used to promote, I used to help them promote clubs um, back when, before Deaf Comedy Jam became Deaf Comedy Jam. Um, Tommy and all of them, Russell Simmons, would come out to the clubs and do comedy events. Mm -hmm. And so we would promote a lot of um, music um, industry. And so that's how I got into it. And I have tried, I lied to you, not to get out of this business, but God has keep calling me back into it. And now I understand it's a blessing that... I'm here and I'm not running anymore and I'm doing the music thing. And I, he has blessed me with a wonderful husband who also is in it. So we just combine our talents and here we are. <laughs> so you are a minister as well? Yes, I am. I'm a, a Dane minister. So it had to be extremely difficult. I can relate it to be in a secular, you know, environment in your work and in your livelihood and serving in the kingdom of God. Yes? It, it was very, very difficult, and I'm glad you brought that up because one of the reasons why we have not been major and we could have been a thousand times over is because of our faith in God. And one of the things when I first took my, well, I ran from that too. When God first called me to minister, it was like, he must have the wrong one <laughs> because of the things that I've, I've done. And what I've learned in that is that God knows your heart. And when it comes 
to your heart and when it comes to your faith in God, it's a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And people will say a lot of things, but that has nothing to do with your walk with God. That if you have a strong faith in God and you know that you know that you know who he is, Mm -hmm. that's all that matters. And that's what I had to learn because for a long time when I first became a minister, it was a lot of things that I'm from old school. So, you know, like the older churches, you know, the older generation, they kind of frown on certain things that you do and how you are. I had to really pray on that. And God spoke to me one day and he said, who called you? I called you. You know, yes. so you, know, you don't worry about other people. You worry about me. Yes, correct. Frank, now you produce music, um, and music transcends everything. It's universal. But do you have to deal with that aspect? Do you get any feedback when you're going yeah. to produce your music? Yes? I've dealt with that aspect for a very, very long time because, mm-hmm. uh, like Terry, I'm not a minister, but my mom, my dad, my brothers and sisters, you know, they're all in, all in, you know, we, we all are covered under the blood of Jesus. And my walk is just, you know, doing secular music has been different from what my family has been doing. And I've run into, you know, situations because of, me dealing with the secular world so much, um, I, I understand what it is. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've dealt with this for a long time also. Yes. But um, I, I know that God knows my heart, and as long as I give him my heart and I give him my all, then what's for me, he'll give to me. You know, I mean, I, I've, been do, I've been doing music for a very long time, as the brother, the, uh, the the brother that's on the phone, I apologize. I, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. But, Edmund uh, Douglas. You good? You good? Okay. Um, I'm 50 years old myself, and I've been doing music since I was 13. And um, I've, I've I've done work with you name it. I've done work with them, and you know, and I that's another thing. I really don't like you know, name dropping and stuff like that. But my wife always bullies me into doing that because <laughs> she says, your wife it's your is resume. right. Your wife is right. It's, it's your resume. It's your resume. And, but you know, I'm just, I'm humble and I rather just let my music speak for itself, you know, to sit here and I could go through a, a hundred names of people that I've worked with in the industry and, you know, that I still have close ties with, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it to me it all boils down to my creativity and what I'm doing behind the boards and you know the music that I'm producing. So, you know, I could say that I work with you know Next and Lauren Hill. We got a Grammy for Lauren Hill, but you know I could say that. But does my music speak for that? You understand? So yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of a thing with me, you know. But um, to reflect back on your question, yes, I, I've, I've dealt with that. Uh, you know, dealing with secular and dealing with, you know, praising God and giving God the glory through our music. You know, um, wow. Mm-hmm. Terry and Frank, you two was you um you're speaking about God or Terry speaking, um, running away. What people don't realize that's why we, we have this kind of show Robin and I for people to share their testimony. When you're running away, uh, it's not a bad thing, okay? It wasn't a mistake running away from the voice of God. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, I heard both of you guys, I heard the anointing in both of you guys. Um, and you two have always been obedient, okay, and faithful mm-hmm. to God. And so what God did Everything was the process. I don't know what your life was like before you two have met, but everything was a process. And then, the, and then, what Robin was saying was it difficult? No, ain't nothing difficult when God is in it. Everything is right. in plan yeah. and process. Of course, the closer we get to God, the friend that who you thought was your friend will no longer be your friend. 
Not that you right. see them in public, you can't speak to them. Remember, many are called, but on a field of tourism. And when God yeah. elevates you and your, your life, your ministry, by the way, for those who don't understand, who listen, marriage is a ministry. Okay? Yes, so that's why is. God put you two it together. Is. And since yes, you two is. have been elevated, not everybody can go with you. Because God did not reveal the other to see. That's why people complain and criticize criticize you. That's right. why people lie on you, hate on you, because God did not reveal it to them to see what he has for you. Right. And, you know, uh, piggyback off of that, I always tell my wife, and, and this is just a saying, not only to her, but this is what I say to, to a lot of people. You know, when you deal with a situation, and it doesn't turn out with the outcome that you had in mind. And you'll say, man, you know, this is crazy. That should have worked like this. That should have worked like that. I thought me and that dude was cool. I thought me and that artist was cool. I thought me and that girl, we was going to get it on. We was going to have this. We was going to have that. We had plans to do. What happens is when that thing falls short and in it, it, our situation, especially for me and my wife, I always tell her, we can't look at that as a loss. We have to look at that as God moving them out of the way so that we can get to where we need to get to. Because everybody is not going to have the mind and the heart set that we have to do what we need to do. So as long as we continue to ask God to give us the spirit of being humble and give us the spirit to sit and listen to what he has to say and not move so fast on our own, I know that we'll be all right. That's it. That's it. Terry, wow, yeah, yeah, we, we can go on and on, wow. <laughs> Terry, um, could you give us a quick insight on your life? What made you, I know you said God called you to run, could you just give us a quick insight? What was the most powerful thing, specifically, that made you decide to take the calling and you recognize part of your trial and tribulation? Well, when I, I was going through something when I got my calling, I usually, um, like I said, music is, I'm a huge music fan, all genre of music, different types of music. And I, um, my car, I, I love to travel. My car and music is all I need to travel. And, of course, you know, gas. But, um, so I was going through a situation where I was fighting for custody of, of my children. And I was going down to, I had lived, I was living in South Carolina. I had moved to Virginia. And I was going back to, I was going back and forth. And I had to go down for court. And I was really in a bad place. Because every time I had to go to South Carolina, it was a bad place for me. And God spoke to me and said that I am going to, when you come out, I'm going to bring you out of this. And when I bring you out of this, he said, you're going to have a testimony that you're going to go and you're going to minister to other people. I didn't understand it at the time. And so I had spoke to my sister about it, and she had said, he's calling you. He's calling you to minister. And I was like, no, he ain't going to, no, he's not doing that. <laughs> and so I actually ended up back, I actually ended up back in a, a church that I um, was, when I was little, I got baptized in. And I started out in the back of the church and ended up in the front of the church because Every Sunday I would go and God would tell me, you know, it's time, it's time, it's time. And I wouldn't move. I wouldn't move. I was scared to move. And it was one of those um, country churches, you know, those they had their older ways about the church. And so I was scared. I was like, they're not going to let me do this. They're not going to let me do this. And one day I just jumped up. I always say, God, put, pick me up and put me in front of the church and said that I wanted to be a minister. And I went through a six-month walk, and one day I was at work, and I was it was really weighing on me heavily. I kept saying, God, I don't have any training in it. They're not going to call me for it. This is not going to work. And he spoke to me and said, who are they? I called you. Who are they? Who are you worried about? And a friend of mine who I had just started working with, son, got shot. 
And I ended up going to the hospital to see. I don't know why she called me. She called me 12 o'clock at night, said her son had got shot. He was, the doctors told her they he wouldn't live uh, past a couple of hours. And I started ministering to her, but it wasn't me. It was God. And then I went to visit him, and we ended up having church in the um, waiting room. And this lady asked me, she said, where do you preach at? And I said, oh, no, I don't preach. I'm in my six-month walk. And she was like, well, I tell you what. She said, when you um, get your certificate, you come see us because we want you to preach at our church. And at that moment, I realized what God was saying to me. He had given me a, a, a word. He had given me something to do. And that's where... I've been going ever since, from since then. Amen. Wow. Amen. Okay. Frey, can you tell us, share with us what you guys got going on now and coming up on the horizon for you, too? Um, well, we have, um, of course, the Hatchet Chronicles, and I definitely want to thank you for everything that you've done and for us in that aspect. The Hatchet Chronicles is uh, short synopsis. It's it's a uh, program that was near and dear to my wife, and actually we 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 were praying one morning, and when we got done praying, she came to me with this idea, and I said, okay, well, all right, we'll do it, and I didn't really look into it as deep as she was telling me, and then too, you know, I really don't like uh, to you know fame and being out front on camera and stuff like that, so. Um, Anyway, to make a long story short, she kept telling me about it and telling me about it and saying that this was something that she wanted to do. So me, you know, I have to, I can't ever take my wife's option of happiness away. Even if it's something that I don't like, I'm going to support it because if it makes her happy, then as a husband, that's what I need to do. I need to make my wife happy. So I decided to do it with her and, um, to God be the glory, Every since we've been doing it, we've pick, been picking up listeners and picking up viewers, and we've been having excellent topics and things like that. And I think, you know, the spirit of the Lord is moving in me now because I, I, I want to I wanna even, you know, go further with it now. You know, I'm coming up with ideas for shows and everything now. You know what I mean? And it, I'm just, it's a spinoff of what she had in mind in the beginning. And, um... With that being said, um, that was just like the basis of what the Hatchet Chronicles are about. And, you know, we have all kinds of uh, topics from how to get a mate to what happened here in Virginia uh, several months ago uh, uh, in Charlottesville. We had a we did a, uh, a, a show on that also. So we go from anywhere from public topics to relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. JG wow. is actually uh, the company that we have. We put my wife. She 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 does management and she writes contracts. She does websites. She she does a lot of things and and that aspect. And I, you know, far as far as production and you know music, engineering and stuff like that, we decided to put our companies together and. Um, so right now, actually, we have an artist that should be here shortly because uh, I have a recording session with him today. Um, okay. um, he'll be here. Um, I'm work we're working with him. He's one of our artists. I have another artist of mine that's in uh, Atlanta. Uh, it's actually, she's my niece, and um, she's working on some things. Um there's, I have a, I have a few artists, few different artists that I work with, and then also I do uh, mixtapes, and I work with independent artists all over the place, all over the country, from uh, Florida to Denver to Milwaukee, uh, all over. And what I do is I, I, I do I, I do music, and I email the music, and I get these independent artists to uh to do songs to my music so this way i'm showcasing my music and showcasing the independent artists i'm, I'm showcasing their talent at the same time and what i do is i, I put these mixtapes on the free sites 
you know, I, I, we really, I don't really ask for money for, for the, for the music because, um, you know, I, I believe in helping because I never had anyone to help me through my struggles when I was as an artist and as a producer coming up. And I was just, I'm thankful that God blessed me to, you know, uh, come in contact with, with the people that I came in contact with, you know, like, uh, Bud Hanks from Slave and, 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 mm -hmm. uh, Young and Company, uh, man, uh, man, it's, 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 it's a long line of them, man. It's a long right, line of them. Right, right, Next, right. Black Street, uh, so many, Lauren Hill, uh, Houdini, uh, Run DMC, Run DMC's brother, Hurricane, uh, the list goes on, uh, Smooth the Hustler, Trigger the Gambler, uh, just, just so many different artists that I've, you know, uh, done music with. And, uh, from that, you know, I just, I, I've, I've never, you know, I just, I, I took the bumps and bruises on my own. So now that I'm in a position to help independent artists and try to steer them in the right direction to give them some type of insight, because the music business is exactly what it says. Music business is 10% music and 90% business. And if your business is not correct, there's no sense in doing the music, especially if this is the field that you want to get into. So, these artists, I try to teach them parts of the business also and let them know about publishing, and, you know, uh, mechanical royalties and things of that nature, split sheets and, you know, what wow. it takes to of a song and things like that. So when I come in contact with these artists and I work with them, I don't just use them but I also give them, you know, uh, like little sessions of giving them you know, information about the music and I'll tell them where they can look up how to stream live and how to get paid from streaming and marketing tips and things like that. So, um, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's, that's what we do. That's, you know, that's, that's the way that we're all like that. We do really believe a project um, my wife and I um, call Unplanned wow. Challenge. Okay. And we're, um, we're actually grabbing artists for that right now. And, What's the uh, name of it again? Out. It's going, It's called Untapped Talent. All right. And where can they find you? Facebook, Twitter? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, of course, Vibes Live. Yes, <laughs> yeah. VibesLive.com. Yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I had Chronicles on Facebook. Um, we're, we're out there. Um, Okay. Well, I want to thank you both so much for being here. I don't even want you to go nowhere. Matter of fact, we're going to move right along, and you guys stay stay on the show with us, okay? All right, just hang out. You'll enjoy yourself. And and we're, <laughs> yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go nowhere, but take a, we're going to take a quick break. Music, we want y'all to hang on. And when we come back, y'all gonna get a chance to meet Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. I want y'all to be a part of this. And right now, Robin, let's take our break and we'll be right back. She lost all her money She said, don't feel sorry for me No Don't feel sorry, honey But if you want to do a lady a favor Here's what I want Until the next time I see you <laughs> But these last two dollars
gotta hear me some blues She said I wouldn't be over here My man had been treating me right I came here to try to catch him, yeah Cause he'd been sneaking around every night But I got caught up over here, yeah Got caught up in this Casino Lost all the money yeah. She said don't feel sorry Don't feel sorry honey If you want to do a lady a favor Here's what I want producer of Vibes Live. We have over 2 million geographical listeners reaching 200 countries with non-stop music 24-7. Just tune in on VibesLive.com. <laughs> All right, we're back. I'm your host, comedian Edwin Douglas, along with my co-host, Robin Lynn. For those who's tuning in... Hi! Uh, we... We... Uh, great interview uh, with the Hatcher. Uh, mm-hmm. This moment, you know what time it is. Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben Book Club. Uncle Ben, come on in. Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Uncle Hi, Uncle, Uncle ben, ben, Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Yeah, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Okay, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Um, last week you did good. Week before you did good. 
what do you have for us today with your book club and book of the week? Um, look at me, look at me. Today, book of the week, I decided to select it and select it and select it, the Bible. Wait a the minute. The Bible. Really? Okay. Ho ho hold on, hold on, Uncle Ben. We we have a guest on here, and she's a minister. Um, Terry, are you still on the line? I'm still here. Okay. Before we go any further, we're gonna put Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, in check, and I need your assistance if he's giving us some good information. Or bad information, because if you tell me, or Robin tell me, and same thing with you, Frank, if you know, if it's incorrect, this is the day that Uncle Ben and Uncle Ben will be fired. <laughs> oh. Hey, <laughs> now, since you're going to say the Bible is the book of the week, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, um... Well, Mike, I said that's the wrong word, um, the wrong thing right there. The Bible is the book of the century. Actually. You hear that, Uncle Ben? Uncle Ben said, so you better come correct. <laughs> now, my question to you, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, why did you select it, the Bible? Matter of fact, my first question is, which version? Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, King yeah. James Version. All right. Okay, okay. Could you tell us, all of us, as we listening, which book of the Bible is your favorite? Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, the book of Psalm. Okay. Okay. Which chapter? Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, chapter 37, Psalm 37, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Okay. Um, could you just give me one favorite verse? Out of the book of Psalm 37. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, chapter Psalm 37, verse 2. Let this go for you, Edwin Douglas, because you're always picking on me. I could be in, I could be in. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herb. I could be in, I could be in. Oh, okay, okay. Since that's your favorite, so you you gonna put me out there and and, and put me out on blast because I've been bothering you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you something. What my daddy taught me. My daddy from South Carolina. My family from South Carolina, and we our family teach all our kids and family members the Bible. That is something that we got to do. Now, since you're gonna go there with me, let me tell you my favorite. Mm -mm. Part of Psalm 37. And my favorite verse is 13. The Lord shall laugh at him <laughs> and see that the day his day is coming. Wait a minute. That's my favorite. Since you're gonna go that with me, okay? So uh <laughs> Pastor, did 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 he did he come correct? I mean, I know we shouldn't be arguing, <laughs> you know, and pointing fingers at one another, but this, this is what we do. <laughs> you know. Well, I do have to say that if you was going to say 13, you needed to go on to 14, the wicked draw the sword and bend the bow. I mean, well, I mean <laughs> you might as well have went on with it. <laughs> For the listening audience, on behalf of Robin Lynch Productions and myself, I humbly, deeply, sincerely apologize. I, I, I but ladies and gentlemen, Vibe Live family, uh, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben did pick the book of the week, the Holy Bible, uh, okay. the King James Good Version. Good job, good job. Good job, Uncle Ben. Okay. You keep your job. You keep your job. You keep your job. <laughs> All right. We almost lost it there for a minute, though. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, uh, Bob Live um, update news. Update. What do you have for us today? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, we've got the hurricanes and the hurricanes, and you know, there's what I think about the hurricanes, but we won't 
get into that right now. With the updates, what I'd like to do is uh, bring some awareness along with some resolution and some help. So um, in Florida, the whole state of Florida, uh, Xfinity Comcast has opened up hotspots statewide all the way through to August 15th. Yes. And so you can log on anywhere and have internet service in support of the storm and recovering. Okay. If you're not an Xfinity Comcast customer, um, you just have to re-log in every two hours. You do not have to be a customer to get the service. The whole state of Florida. Okay. Let's PSA. do this. With yes, that sir. information you've given, Robin, yes. post that on Vibe Live. Uh, oh, it's group already page. there. It's okay, already. all right. Y'all heard that. You can <laughs> also go on Vibe Live group page to get dinner from. And you can also inbox Robin Lynn and she'll be able to, you know, give you more information. Go yes, ahead. yes. Uh, and that's about it. The With the weathers, the national. The, the, natural disasters, um, the uprising, the civil uprising, the uh, impending martial law and all that. Everyone just prepare so that you can live and survive no matter what comes down. So be prepared to have backup batteries, power sources, you know, could be able to kind of survive off the grid is what I could just straight up tell you. Uh-huh. Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ha! Mercy. Yes. Other than yes. that, run! Because I'm thinking, yes. run for the hills. Get me a pop tent and I'm gone. Tell me. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, don't forget yes. to tune in uh, Vibe Live. Uh, we're 24-7 uh, non-stop music and social entertainment. We also uh, Sunday um, tune in with jazz uh, tune in for gospel tune in for anything everything because we do something that no other AM and FM station does yep. we're non-stop so we have plenty of entertainment plenty of in information if you miss any of our shows we do what we call uh, some people call it encore we've got you uh, on demand we got it all Yes. 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 Um yes. next Why? week. Next week. Next week. Next week. Our guest will be the lovely the author, uh, Jody Bachdock. Yes. So make sure you guys keep up with us. Tune in. Uh vibelive.com dot com twenty four seven. You will hear my voice, you will hear Robin, you will hear everything, you will see everything on Vibe Live group page. Make sure you join if you have not done that yet. Uh anything yeah. that I left out, Robin, before we take off? Uh, we've got the Kevin and Nikki show on Wednesdays. We've got success in the social marketplace. On Tuesday. That's Marvelous Milton Smith, yes. Yeah. We've got Jazz with Jay on Sunday, all day Sunday. Gospel Music Explosion kicks off Sunday, though. Yes. Oh, yes, don't forget, what? congratulate Brian Castle for making the... Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, wonderful news. See, that's what happens when you be part of Vibe Live. You never know who's watching. Brian yes. has been selected, along with Five Live, the iHeart Radio. iHeart Radio. Yes, I congratulations, radio. Brian. iHeart Radio. Yes, yeah. congratulations. And I, Brian also has a song that's trending number one on ReverbNation.com, and a gospel song, too. Shout out to Brian Concha. He's doing really good. Kevin and Nikki. They're going insane all up there in Jersey or Philly, in New York, wherever it is they're doing up there with all their acting and things. And, things. and yes, yeah. your boy, before we go, your boy, comedian Edwin Douglas, kicked off his new project, 2017-2018 uh, season. Yes, mm -hmm. not just gospel, soul, stand-up comedy, reality 
check stand up. That means instead of me uh, bringing the church to the street, I did that last two years. This time yeah. I'm bringing the street to the church. I'm just going to tell you what the pastor ain't going to tell you. You heard mm. me? You know what I'm, I'm going to be doing? I'm going to tell everybody what the pastor ain't going to tell them. That's my job. <laughs> you I'm know gonna what I'm going to be you. doing, though? Guess what I'm going to be doing? What? I'm going to be bringing in the sheaves. I'll come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. You know what? You and Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, need to read Psalm 37 to together. What? <laughs> what? Hold on. <laughs> Until next time, I'm your boy, comedian Edmund Douglas, and you're riding me. Peace and may God bless.
And it's live on Good job. Good job.